This is Office Talk with Annette Stepanian. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Office Talk. I'm really excited about this episode because as you're going to find out in a few minutes here, this guest has a lot of great energy, a lot of enthusiasm for what she does, and is really out there to spread joy, as she says, through her handwriting. So if you don't know Megan Taylor, she is the she behind All She Wrote Notes, and she has built a business for herself teaching others her hand lettering skills. She has different products on her website with her hand lettering. And as you're about to find out, she is more than just a hand lettering artist. She's really out there to spread a mission of joy and happiness. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I know I always love talking to folks who are, in my mind, doing something different. You know, I grew up in a very traditional setting where the career paths were become a lawyer, become a doctor, become a pharmacist, become a CPA. I love hearing stories like Megan's where she recognized that she had a gift and maybe it looked different than what others were doing, but she went with it. She owned it and she has built a beautiful life and a business around that. So with that said, let's go to the show. Megan, 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 Megan. I am so excited for this conversation. I just beforehand, we were talking about how much I have enjoyed getting to know you and like your energy. I wish I could just bottle up and <laughs> and have it on my desk whenever I needed something uplifting and positive in my life. I would just open up that bottle and take, you know, a big deep breath <laughs> of Megan. Is that weird? That kind of sounds weird. Yeah, but I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but Megan, I would love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners. So have at it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I feel the same way about you and I've been so excited to be on here. But my name is Megan Taylor and I'm the she behind All She Wrote Notes, which is a calligraphy and hand lettering studio based out of Elon, North Carolina. And I've been lettering as far back as I can possibly remember. My name is Megan, and my mom chose to spell it M-A-G-H-O-N, which is not how you spell Megan, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you made that up. <laughs> but she says that she spelled it that way because it looked prettier to write. So I think all along, like in some way, shape, or form, I was destined to be an artist. And so it's really cool to be living that out right now. It's amazing to me because, you know, we've gotten to know each other. We met a few months ago. Well, no, was, it, was that a year ago? Yeah, which is crazy. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Like, oh, my goodness. We met at Inspired Retreat, Amber oh House. Yeah. That's insane. I just got chills because <laughs> that's crazy how quickly time goes. But you... Like, you did a presentation, and I've been following you on Instagram since, and, like, I was just thinking about in preparation for this interview, I was like, you know, when I grew up, it was very, like, you just pursued, like, one of maybe three careers, right? Like, you're either a lawyer, a doctor, some, you know, pharmacist, whatever. And so, I look to you, and I say, oh my gosh, this is so amazing to me that you have built a career <laughs> doing calligraphy like it's always and it's not just with you but other folks that I come in contact with that that like there's so much possibility out there and so to me you exemplify that so why don't we kind of take why don't you take us back to how you got to where you are today in terms of doing calligraphy because did you know you were going to do this from day one no, absolutely not. I always loved doing it as just a side passion. Like even all the way through middle school, I was passing notes in class and you know how the teachers like threaten like, oh, if I cut your note, I'm going to open it up and read it aloud. Uh, yeah. I would be like, open it, read it, show it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I had worked really hard. Like it was beautiful. I'd used every marker, every color. And even all the way back through high school, I was the girl who wrote out the banner that the football team runs through. Yeah. And, you know, just things like that. Like I just always was really into this, but I went to college and graduated. I worked in event planning for seven years before this, and I loved events. I love decorating. I love coming up with ideas. I love spending other people's money. <laughs> like, <laughs> all of it. Like I was really, really into that and really enjoyed the energy that I got 
that from the people, but I just like, I was in the kind of job that I was on some sort of screen, like nonstop all the time. So I was not saving lives, but I was in the kind of position where they paid for my cell phone. So I was just constantly available, like constantly connected. And I just missed being creative and just kind of getting my hands dirty and doing something for me that was just fun. And so one year, it was for my birthday, I gave myself a calligraphy course. So signed up, all in, like all the supplies. And when I'm talking about calligraphy, I'm talking about like the old-fashioned metal-tipped pen that you dip into a little jar of ink, like John Hancock. Yeah, like, Like, yeah, George Washington, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's like Declaration of Independence. Like, that's what I wanted to do. And so my grandmother was an artist, and I just grew up watching her and watching her paint and watching her sell her art and just on all different mediums. And I was just so fascinated by her. But she passed away when I was in the fifth grade, and I inherited some of her old, like, art tools and supplies and the calligraphy came along with that and so I signed up for a course and I was so excited just couldn't wait to dive in and I was terrible like I was the worst one in my class oh come on are you just saying that you're just being hard on yourself I was holding my pen upside down for (laughs) over half of the session and the worst part was like I was not humble at all. Like, I did not go into this feeling like, oh, like, I might be good. I was like, I'm going to be awesome. Like, and I was terrible. (laughs) And so, (laughs) I was so disappointed. Really, what it came down to, not only could I not hold the pen correctly, but I was looking around the room and just comparing myself to everybody else. Like, I was looking at other girls' work, and I would think, like, oh, mine's not as elegant as hers. Like, mine's not as formal as hers. Like, nobody's ever called me elegant a day in my life. Like, that is just not... (laughs) the adjective that people use to describe me. But I I was thinking like I wasn't good enough because I didn't look like all these other people. And it wasn't until I've been doing calligraphy for like a few weeks, like I was just doing it for fun and sharing it with my, you know, friends I worked with and coworkers. And my friend Laura said, I've never seen calligraphy look so fun. And I was just a compliment from her. Like it wasn't anything major. I don't think, I don't think she intended to change my life with this. (laughs) But it gave me so much encouragement and because she said, I've never seen this look fun. I was like, oh, I can do fun. Like, I've got that. Like, I can make this me. Like, I can put my personality on that paper. And that's where all this started. Like, she was, I was at a book club and she was like, you should sell these. Like, I would buy these note cards. Like, you know, I would do this. And the other girls were so encouraging. And so that night I went home and from my bed on my iPhone 4, like I didn't even have internet or computer or anything (laughs) normal business people have. But I started all she wrote notes. And I had one follower, which was me on my other account. (laughs) (laughs) and everybody starts somewhere right (laughs) that's where we started and and I just have kept showing up every day writing stuff every day this was on the side for two and a half years so I was still working in events full-time and I would come home and work from about 6 p.m. until midnight or 1 a.m. filling orders writing stuff for people I'd wake up in the morning pack it take it to the post office and then go to work and so I did that hustle for over two and a half years and loved it. Like I just, it was what I was working so hard for. I was enjoying every minute and it just got to the point that my business had grown so big that I was going to be able to leave my full-time job and replace that income. And and that was a goal that I had from very early on. I actually loved my job. A lot of people who are in the creative world, they're like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't wait to leave. I was sad to leave. Like I loved it. It just got to the point that I knew I was leaving money on the table if I stayed and it was just a better choice for our marriage and for our life if I was only having one job, <laughs> not two. That's so, amazing. I've almost been in business five years. Oh my goodness. That's like, I feel like we should toss confetti or something. Yeah. <laughs> you probably, <laughs> yay. Oh my goodness. I wish you guys could actually see this video because uh, she literally has like party favors in the background. It is. <laughs> playing him, tossing him around. Okay. So that sounds super easy. You're like, I just decided like, (laughs) I, you know, I had this thing. I had this, like, I love handwriting. People wanted my stuff. And then it just finally just replaced my income. I left my job. Right. But obviously it wasn't like that. So can you, if someone is in, you know, maybe an artist or, you know, maybe is a hand lettering artist or a calligrapher or whatever, and they want to get to a point where they can leave their day job, for instance, or, you know, have this be more than what might be perceived as a hobby, right? What kind of advice do you have for them? Or what are some of the challenges that you came across that you now look back on and you're like, wow, if I wish I knew that, it would have saved me so much time and effort and heartache. 
I think a couple things. For me, the first thing is just to start like right where you are. Like you do not have to have, yeah, I didn't even have internet. I didn't even have a computer. Like if you <laughs> wait until you have everything in place that you could ever need or want, you'll never start if you're, if you're waiting for the perfect time. Just go with what you've got and just start moving forward. Like every single day I was making art and I was sharing it. I didn't wait till I had a beautiful logo or a website or all these things. Like I just knew that I wanted to make the stuff that made people happy. And at the beginning, I didn't necessarily have a goal in mind of leaving my full-time job. I just had that little goal of making my stuff and selling it. And it just kind of continued to grow and grow and grow. And I think for me, I really, really hustled hard in that early season. I do think that people like kind of glamorize hustle and like it's like a big thing now. And But I feel like back then I hustled really hard so that now I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I've been in business five years, I can breathe. Like I'm not still working 24 seven like I used to. I, I feel like I put in that time early on so that now I'm able to just kind of take a little bit of a break and just kind of know what I'm good at. That would be the other thing that I would tell new business owners is just sort of like know what you're good at and what you're not and build your business around what you love and what you enjoy doing. It's so easy as an artist or even as a calligrapher. I mean, my business is my handwriting. So when somebody says, can you write on that? Yes, I can. I can write on anything. But like, should I write on that? Like, should I build my business doing this or doing that? And very early on, a big mistake I made was just saying yes to everything. Like, just just doing all these different projects and kind of like burying myself in work that wasn't really my specialty just because I wanted to say yes and make people happy. But in the end, I wasn't really happy because I was doing just a lot of random stuff that wasn't really my gift. And so I think just kind of honing in on what it is that you're really good at and what is special to you and the talent that is unique to you and not really trying to be everything to everybody. But do you think you had to say yes to everything in the beginning to figure that out? Or did you know from day one, like, this is my gift or this is what I'm really good at? That's a really good point. I think early on, because of what I went through in that class, knowing that my writing didn't look like everybody else's, I knew that mine was different. And so that's really a lot of the pitfalls I fell into is when I was trying to please people that really wanted a more formal style, that really wanted another girl who's more fancy than me to write it. More, <laughs> what did you call elegant? More no, no. fancy, yeah, yeah. More, <laughs> elegant, more beautiful, more formal. <laughs> and when you're an artist, like what it comes down to is that someone else's writing. Like that's another girl's hand like that made that not me and just not trying to fit me into that you know form that they're wanting and so that was just really hard at the beginning to you you think like you need all these yeses you need this money you want this income but at the end of the day like what you really want is to deliver something that is just really great quality that they're gonna love and that you loved making yeah. When you say like, oh, something that wasn't me, like you guys, like Megan is like, the, the, I hope you can hear the like energy in her voice. Like I remember even at Inspired, like your personality was like, not just your personality, but it like, it, it manifested in everything. Like your, what you wore, like you, she had the cutest outfit. <laughs> like it really is like, it, this is you, you know, like it's not a caricature or anything. And I think sometimes what, what kind of thoughts do you have on people who design a business that is so much of their personality? Like, do you find that that can drain you sometimes or maybe you take things personally or is that just not even an issue for you? Because you know what I mean? Like when it's because it's yeah, all about it's you so and it's your handwriting and you, yeah. Yep. I think that's probably one of the hardest things about being a business owner is that it all feels personal. Like for me at the very beginning, like I actually tried, I thought that to be a calligrapher, that to be, you know, in the wedding industry, that I needed to be more formal. I needed to be more bland. <laughs> no offense <laughs> to those people, but I thought I needed to be more like black and white. And when I started, the burlap was really in down here in the South and kind of the mason jar theme, like for all the weddings. So I made my branding like have brown in it. And that's my least favorite color. <laughs> and I had like burlap and I would wear cowboy boots. And like, I'm from the South. I'm as Southern as they come, but that's not, I'm not a cowgirl. And 
it wasn't until I was probably six or eight months in that I just felt like I was trying to fit a square peg to a round hole. And I was like, this isn't me. And with my friends telling me that I can make more fun, I added the color back in. I added the confetti back in, which I have always loved. I have been collecting donkey pinatas since I was in college. And that's just like a fun little mascot that I've had. And just kind of making the correlation for people that calligraphy was for celebrations, not just weddings. So like any kind of party, any kind of celebration. And, and that was where I felt so comfortable roping back in the color. Cause I felt like I was hiding that part of myself and I was like, no, 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 this is me. Like this is who I am. And so taking it in that direction and making it so closely related to Megan as a person and not all she wrote as a brand, it really kind of makes it hard because it you do take things really personally. I think that my brand and my personality really can have the potential to either attract or repel. Like I will be too much for some people and those are just not my people. Yeah. And it was just really, I mean, I've been dealing with that since I was in middle school, you know, like just kind of finding your friends and finding your people and your niche. And you know, that when somebody is like, Oh, she's too much like that. She's a lot. Like I knew that wasn't going to be my friend. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm a lot. I think I'm just enough. Like, I think this is good. Aww, I love that. And it's, it was really, that was always a struggle for me, like growing up and just kind of like not letting anybody else dim that shine and putting it online. I mean, I've been really grateful. Like I've had a lot more positive experience than negative experiences, but those negative ones still really hurt and they get you, but you just have to kind of like go back and look and read all the positive things and and the joy that you're putting out there. And I think like if that's always going to be your heart and your mission behind it, that's going to rise above anything negative that happens. Absolutely. So well said. So well said. So looking in behind your business, like can you, you know, shine a light or maybe share some things about like, what does your business look like now? Cause yeah, we see all the beautiful, I was just joking with her earlier before we start recording about how like, her Instagram photos are like the first ones to pop in. So whatever you've done with my Instagram algorithm, it is working, Um, you know, but (laughs) what does it look like behind the scenes, you know, behind all the beautiful hand lettering and all the different, you know, projects you're working on? Like, does it just you? Do you have help? Do you like, how, how has it grown? When it started, it was just me like all hours of the night, like when I was still working full time. And then I took my business full time in 2015. And that season even looked a lot different than it looks now. Like when I first started working for myself, I still had that mindset of working all the time. Like I pretty much left a nine to five to work a 24 <laughs> seven. It was crazy. And I just teaching my primary source of income is actually teaching classes. So I travel all across North Carolina and the South teaching lettering workshops and, and having parties with people teaching them my handwriting style, both calligraphy and hand lettering. And when I first started, I was only teaching once a week. And then I went full time and started teaching three and four times a week. So I was gone almost every single night on the road. Just I wanted to say all the yeses. Like I didn't want to turn anything down. I just was like, oh, that sounds fun. This sounds great. I would drive all the way to Atlanta for the same price as I was teaching like 10 minutes away from my house. And mm. so just not thinking, just wanting to say yes and go. And then in 20, I guess it was 2016, I found out that we were pregnant with Vance, my little boy, Mm. and that changed everything, like in a good way, but it was really scary for me at the time. I was really sick during my pregnancy. I had the same thing that Kate Middleton has, the HG is what they call it. Because you must be royalty, right? Yeah, that's what that means, right? Yeah. Exactly. She and I are the same. (laughs) I had that and it really slowed me down and got to me where even though I was still traveling and still fulfilling all these commitments all day long, like I just did not have the energy and the strength to like muster up to keep going during the day. And I just like, it was really preparing me for what it looks like now. So instead of working seven days a week, 10 hours a day or whatever it might've been back then, I work now up in the office only three days a week. I do have help. We have actually my sister comes three days a week and helps us with vans while I'm up here, usually about six hours a day. And then I only teach once a week now. I used to teach three or four times a week. And now I teach every Thursday night. And that's usually it. And my husband works third. And so he's not here at night. And that's why it was really easy for me to be gone so much all the time. But now my mom and dad actually come and watch fans for me on Thursday so that I can teach classes. And it's just been a big shift. I think that I, I built the business in this way 
you know, back in the day where it could be run like this. And now the days that I'm up here, I'm usually packing and shipping orders almost the whole time. And then a little bit of email and then a little bit of like kind of maintaining business, like behind the scenes sorts of things. Yeah. And then on Mondays and Fridays, I don't promise anybody that I'm up here. I don't have office hours up here, but I come up here every time. <laughs> <laughs> like when Vance is napping or when Chris can be with him for a little bit. There's just, you know what it's like, like yeah. running your business. There's just always something to do, like always some kind of fire that needs to be put out or something that needs to be responded to. And I work really, really hard to protect those boundaries and, you know, just tell people, hey, I'm not in today. Like the reality is I'm a mom today. Like I have a child hanging on me. I cannot write anything for yeah. you. I can't answer an email eloquently. Like, it's just really difficult for me to feel like I'm giving 100% to either business or being a mom. Yeah. And I would just rather have those days where I know I'm all in, you know, one or the other. And so it's worked really well. It's been, you know, a huge blessing. There's no way I could do it by myself. I'm really, really grateful for the help. But it looks a lot different because I have about half the amount of time that I used to have. So because you have half the amount of time and, you know, you're not teaching as often, you're, you know, you've taken it down to one time a week. Did you have to make like strategic decisions about like, okay, well, because I can't do things that require my time because that's a limited resource, even more so now, like I'm going to have to do more of X to like compensate for that. Definitely. It was really hard because I hadn't worried too much about a budget. When I was traveling all these times and teaching all these classes, I could kind of know and predict like what my income was going to be because, you know, each class has a certain number of tickets and those kinds of things. And so dialing that back really cut that class income in half. And I had to look a lot more carefully at the products I was selling and the offerings I was producing to make sure that they were bringing in enough money to compensate for what I was losing. Yeah. And I'm really glad that, you know, just having to look at things like, you know, more wisely, which was a really good move. Like that was something before I didn't really worry too much about. I was like, Oh, you know, we'll sell these. Even if it takes two years, like we'll sell this side. I can't do that anymore. Like I yeah. have to bring something in that's going to go fly off the shelf so yeah. that I can get that ROI back. Another thing for me, I'm going to be releasing an online class this summer. And that was just a big thing that I have wanted to do for years. But it really just gave me that final push knowing that like there are more people that I would love to teach that I'm just not able to. And I'm not able to go as far as I would like to go and be on the road as much as I used to be. And I think now with adding that online offering, like it'll be where I can be more places at once and I can, you know, serve these people and I can reach these people and keep that mission of spreading happiness through my handwriting. But my wheels aren't turning on the road. (laughs) Yeah. I don't have to be the one in the car to be able to make that happen. So I'm really excited for that offering, but it's something that I wouldn't necessarily have done or needed prior to my, you know, shift and schedule changing this past couple of years. I'm really happy to hear that you're doing that because it almost seems like, well, why haven't you done it (laughs) all like all these years? Right. So can you tell us a little bit more about the course and what that's going to look like? Yes, I'm so excited to be releasing this. And this is something that has been in the back of my mind, but really what of all the things I have time to do working on my business is probably the thing I don't have time to do. You know, like it's, yeah. it's really something I need and something I would love, but the time to just create and design new things, like I feel like so often I'm just kind of in the weeds like of the day to day. And so I went to Inspired again. I, I came back to the same conference that we met at and I had been telling people for probably a year that I wanted to do this online course and, and I just was overthinking it. I was feeling like it had to be this just like, you know, complex thing with all these different modules and similar to some of the courses I had taken before. And I taught my class there live, just like I do at all the workshops I travel around and teach. And two of my friends who were there were like, all you needed was a camera on you. Like, yeah. That was it. You gave us everything you needed. You were so worried about this, but like all you needed is just to have somebody record that, like what you just did. Yeah. It's really cool because my sister is going to be filming. We actually start filming on Friday. Um, We've already done a few of the pieces ahead of time, but I'm just going to feel so comfortable with them in front of the camera. I feel like I just want to give that same in-person warm welcome and, and Southern hospitality experience to just whoever wants to tune in and take it. And so that'll be releasing later this summer and it'll be the whole entire class that I teach here in North Carolina in person. 
And then I'm excited because I want to encourage people to get it together and watch it together. So there will be like party packages where you can get the kits for you and all your friends and confetti and cups and koozies, all kinds of things like that. That'll make your night really special because I think as fun as it is to do this on your own, this was meant to be shared. Like this was meant to be done with other people and done with your friends and your community and people that you love. And so I can just totally see girls like gathering around their kitchen table and having their friends over drinking some wine and doing this lettering um, with one of the videos. And that's really what I'm most excited about is just being able to come into the homes like of people that when I first started, that's what I did. I would travel around with my car and like bring a bucket full of stuff to your house. And I would (laughs) do this like at your home, like with you and your girlfriends. And it just continued to grow to the point that stores were inviting me and I needed bigger spaces. But that's really where it all started. And I just am really excited to kind of get back to those roots, you know, with this program. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm glad for the encouragement. Again, I would not be anywhere without the encouragement of my friends and just their support and giving me that confidence. Like I think all the way back to Laura telling me my stuff looked fun. And then with Heather and Kathy saying, you should have just had a camera recording. Like what do you got to do this? Like go for it. And I just think sometimes as women, like if a compliment pops into our head, it just seems to pop out of our mouth. Like (laughs) we owe that to our girlfriends, like to our sisters to to say that thing, like whatever it is, because you just don't know like what kind of insecurities like she might be dealing with or like what else is going on in her head. And I think just to have that positivity and to have that encouragement is just huge. So I'm a big believer in that. I'm so, I love that you said that because I think so often we do think good things about other people, but we don't, for some reason, we don't say it. I subscribe to that philosophy where it's like, if I have a good thought about you, I'm going to compliment you. And it might seem sometimes like my husband says, he's like, you say, I love you too much. (laughs) So it loses its meaning. (laughs) And so I get that. And so like, it can almost seem a little disingenuous because you're saying it. So it's kind of like when you say a word so much after a while, you're like, what does this mean? Right. It loses its meaning. But like, I am a big believer in like, I feel like one for me is like, I don't want someone to walk away not knowing that I like love them or I cared for them. Or like, I thought like, I don't know. I appreciated something they did. Oh, I'm getting all chills. <laughs> like all chilly. <laughs> me too. That's my thing. Yeah. And like, but then I also think that like, in this world, we don't give enough compliments and like we're thinking them anyway. And like, what's weird is when you do give people compliments because people don't share positive things enough, like the person kind of looks at you and they're like suspicious. <laughs> like, you're yeah, crazy. What they are don't you talking about? They don't know how to take it. And I agree with you. I think like, don't force it. But if you think something great, like, I loved your shoes when we were at Inspired, right? Like you say it to the person or whatever, you know, even if it's something as small as like, oh, okay, I love that necklace that you're wearing. You know, it doesn't have to be something like, you just changed my life and this was so transformational for me. And yeah, I think we definitely need more of that. I totally agree. I'm a big compliment giver and I like to receive um, words of affirmation are my love language. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> words take them as much as I can. <laughs> That's funny. And I, I just want to go back. I love your idea of the party packs because I always want to learn handwriting and calligraphy, but I'm, I'm of the mindset of like, oh, mine never looks as cute, whatever. And so I want to go to these classes, but getting my girlfriends together to do that is always so difficult. And when we do want to hang out, we're like, well, what do we do that doesn't involve eating? (laughs) (laughs) You know, because usually, inevitably, someone's on a diet, you know, so I love this idea. And so I am excited to like to see it come to life. And then I'm going to definitely sign up and get my girls together and do this because I think we would I think they would love it. Yeah, I love it. It is such a fun thing to do with your girlfriends. And I always tell people, like, before they leave my in-person classes, I give them homework. And I tell them that their homework, their assignment, is that they need to write someone else's name that they love, that, you know, will spread joy to them, that will make their day better. And either send them a picture of it or pop it in the mail or put it on their desk at work. And it's so cool to see, like, the repercussions of that. Like, they'll, you know... Instagram message me or email me and say, I did that. I did my homework and she loved it. Like it said, it made her day. And so I just don't feel like any of this is meant to be like stingy with. Like, I don't think you need to save this writing for a special occasion, like how we do our wedding China, you know, or whatever. Like Chris and I eat pizza on our wedding China every single Friday. I love and that. It's not even like homemade. It's like takeout. <laughs> 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 we break out the fancy plates because 
I just believe like life is short. Like you just don't yeah. ever know, you know, when, when you're going to be here and when you're not. And I just think it's so worth celebrating. Like no matter if it's a Friday or a Tuesday night or whatever you've got going on, I just think burn the candles and put out the fancy plates and wear your lipstick and just I, all the things that we save. I just don't think we should save it. And I think this is why I like connected with you so much is because I have come to realize that over the last like 10, 15 years is the same. Like I would buy, I remember distinctly, I had this one jacket that I bought and I was like saving it. And then I had this like candle that I bought that smelled so good. I was saving that. I had this lotion that I bought that smelled so good. I was saving that. I'm like, what the heck am I saving this for? Like, A, it's not like a limited resource, you know? <laughs> it's not like time or whatever, right? It's a candle. I can always yeah, go buy another, buy one, another one, right? Yeah. You know, and so I started very consciously just using those things and saying like, the time is now. Like, if this jacket makes me feel so good, why is it sitting in my closet? Yeah, wear um, it and every day. <laughs> wear it every day and just, yeah. And like, we just, we got our floors redone the dog we have two dogs we have two golden doodles like you do and yours is a golden doodle or a labradoodle we have one of each we have a golden doodle and a labradoodle okay okay so they're running around scratching up the floors and like you know we're just like we just paid a whole bunch of money to refinish these floors but i keep telling myself i'm like you know a home is meant to be lived in Yeah. yeah like i love a beautiful space i love things to look nice but like What's the, it's not meant to be a museum, you know? (laughs) So So we're going to have scratches on the floors. We're going to have spills on the couch, but it's okay. I can always fix that later, you know? But these these memories, like you can't recreate or you can't, uh, you, you just, they just have to happen when they're meant to happen. So and now I have chills. (laughs) Oh, I wish you were closer. Oh, anyway, looking. Okay. So you've been at this for about five years. And so... Mm -hmm. I'm not a big, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm asking this question, but it's coming to me. So I'm going to ask like five years from now, you would have been 10 years into it. What are some of those things that come to mind of like where you'd like this business to be or where you maybe even just personally would like to be if you don't mind sharing that? That's such a great question. It's something that I don't think a lot about either. If you had asked me five years ago, if I would be here, I I am just so much further along in life and in business and everything than I ever would have told you. So I hope that it's the same (laughs) five more years from now. I would be happy as could be if it was just like it is right now. But I, you know, just hope and pray that like I am able to further this mission even more that like whatever that looks like, if that looks like stuff online or maybe on TV in some way, shape or form, like I just think it would be awesome to reach as many people because I don't think that I have this platform because I have pretty handwriting. Like I really think there's a lot of girls who have pretty handwriting, but I feel like that God gave me this because I have the positivity and I have that energy and personality to just inspire other people. Like it's not really just about the writing. It's Mm -hmm. about making other people happy. And so the bigger and the better the you know, ways that I could do that, I would love to have a book. Like I would love to, you know, just have the time that I have right now to be a mom and a business owner. Like I think, you know, in five more years from now, Vance will be six and he'll be going to school. So I think I'll have like more time available to do these things. But I hope that I still am, you know, a really good manager of that time. Like I hope I don't waste it and that I'm just, you know, all the way in on our marriage and our family and that the business is just a supplement to that. It's like the icing on the cake, but it, you know, is providing for us to do more things. Things. And yeah. a big goal that I have for us, a lot of people ask me, like, would you like to have a retail store or a retail shop? And I wouldn't. That's not a, a goal or a vision for me right now because I love being able to travel and visit so many other different businesses and bring people into their stores and their shops and just help them. But something that I would love to be able to do for our family is to just have like a condo, like at the beach, like that's our favorite (laughs) place to go. Like that's our favorite location. Like any vacation we get to take, I would love to just buy a one bedroom place like that we can vacation to anytime. Like, I mean, with my business money, you know, that's what, that's what I sunk it into instead of a retail store. It's really selfish, I guess, but that's what I would love just for our family. And that's something that I really want to work towards and be able to give us. um, Yeah. You know, just that getaway and that time and just the ability to reconnect and kind of just come back together after having busy weeks and after kind of being pulled in different directions. 
I really, really look forward to the weekends and love that time. So that yeah. would be cool to have that in five more years. I'd be really excited. And how cool if that condo was on Airbnb and it was like yes. totally decorated with yeah, like all exactly. she wrote notes. It's so <laughs> funny that you say that because I have like a secret Pinterest board that it, like <laughs> I want it to be like that. Like I want it to be like white walls with all these pops of color and a hot pink couch. I'm oh, like, girl. I have a vision. <laughs> I totally know what you're talking about because I think I'm like... I think deep down. So when I had my jewelry company, I was like, I think I'm a Southern girl at heart (laughs) because (laughs) seriously, because I like so resonate with like the colors and like just the just it's so like the colors are so loud. And I know that can be kind of jarring for some people, (laughs) but like I love it. I feel like it's like so happy and so just playful And that, like, I remember I would do trade shows, like, in L.A., and I was like, my jewelry does not, like, look like (laughs) anybody else's. And it was kind of a bad thing because everybody in L.A. wanted to wear, like, these, like, tiny little dots. And I like that jewelry, too, like, the really dainty stuff. And mine was, like, sparkles and Swarovski crystals. (laughs) So I was like, I need to be, I think I'm a Southern girl. Definitely, definitely. I think you are. You definitely are. (laughs) That's you. You have the official seal of approval. (laughs) No, I totally think so. But I think it's fun. I think that, like, a big thing for me, like, just always, like, ever since I was young, like, I've loved bright colors. And I think, like, at heart, I'm like a sixth grader who just, like, never grew up. Because everything I loved then is the exact same stuff I love now, including Chris Taylor, my husband. Um, (laughs) My boyfriend in middle school (laughs) you're like I never went past the sixth grade I never grew up and it's cool though because I love wearing bright colors and that was a big thing like when I made this shift out of a a nine to five like out of a more corporate style job to doing my own job just what I could wear like what I could get away with it and I mean I tried my best to push the limits like at that job but I mean you would walk in and they'd be like whoa yeah (laughs) But now, I mean, I love dressing in bright colors and I love wearing that stuff. And when people, it's amazing how much it impacts other people. Like it yeah. gives people something to talk about and to say to me like, Ooh, look yeah. at that necklace or Ooh, look at that shirt. And like, they're smiling and they might be laughing, but like, I'm good with it either way. No, <laughs> like, because this is what it. I learned. This is what I learned doing the jewelry because I've always loved really big, bold jewelry, like your costume jewelry and whatnot. And so I've noticed that a lot of people like it, but they're like, I can't wear that. And so, and what tended to sell were the more muted colors, like the blacks and the whites and the, you know, like, and so even though here I was trying to like, kind of shove all this like big, bold, sparkly stuff, you know, to, to people like here, wear this, wear this. It was, I just think a lot of, I think women don't, I don't know if it's, they don't want to draw the attention or whatnot, or they're trying to kind of blend in the background, but they felt like, oh, well that's, I can't, I can't do that. You know, where I was like, yeah. oh, who says you can't, you know, in I fact, so often that people think that like they think they can't, but if they can and they would just try it for a day, like try hot pink nails or try red lipstick, hot pink or, pants, like buy the pink shirt instead of the black shirt and like, yeah. rock it like you're going to freaking love it. <laughs> it's so fun. I want to go to Target with you <laughs> because oh yeah, when I go to Target and I, you know, when you like walk down like the clothing aisle, I'll stop and I'm like, oh my God, that's such a cute shirt. And then I realize I'm standing in front of the little girl section. <laughs> with... I know. Oh, the cat and Jack. Like, I want all that in my size. I don't know why they don't make it in adult size because there ha- if, if I mean, if there's you and I like it, there has to be a niche it. of women who do like it too. But yeah, I just, I hate when you go into stores and you're like, I want a happy color and everything is okay. just so like muted, which I can appreciate that too, but... For the most part, if, if given the choice, I'd like to go for the brighter color. Um, oh, man. When I go shopping, like, I kind of try to have tunnel vision, like, for color. Like, I don't even look for black or navy or, like, white, like, anything plain. Like, and I don't buy a lot of patterns. Like, I don't yeah. buy solids. But, Me like, too. I will pick a shirt and then think, like, what's the funnest color that this comes in? Like, I'll take that one home. <laughs> I love it. Like, that's how I shop. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I feel, it looks like the color pink threw up in my closet. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and on my website. <laughs> but I love it. Oh my gosh. Their brand colors are my favorites. And I like I have never seen more beautiful slides than the ones that you made for Inspired. Like they were just so bright and so bold and so colorful. And I think that's why I love your brand so much too, because you're funny and like you do all these like law puns and like all these bright colors. And it's like 
such a cool juxtaposition from like what you think of when you think of a lawyer and Thank like all you. these legal terms and things like you just make it so much fun and so I was immediately drawn to that the very first time Aww. that I met you so keep that going That's thank good. you thank you I appreciate hearing that you know I do my best I think for me I think I am such a visual person and like the visual presentation of something whether it's a slide or whether it's my home is so important to me because it gives me so much like I don't know if it's energy but I just I appreciate it so much and so I try and carry that through and sometimes I'm it works and sometimes it doesn't but I try I am very sensitive to that because it's it's like I said it's what I enjoy I remember reading briefs like when I was at the law firm you know like the stuff that you have to like they're basically yeah. long essays that you submit to the court and I was always like well what is it how does it look visually because if it looks visually like boring like the clerk isn't well, going to want to read it the judge isn't right. going to want to read it. like it has to be easy to digest and I think there's so much more thought behind it than, like, I think sometimes we even recognize. There's, like, a whole science to it, right? So right. Yeah. So, anyway, this is why we're friends. That. <laughs> That's how we like to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, Megan, thank you so much for being here. And before I wrap up, I do want to wrap this up with a question I ask all of my guests, which is, the one thing I know for sure is, and I ask you to fill in the blanks. The one thing I know for sure is that life should be celebrated. There you go. Couldn't think of a better <laughs> way to end this interview. I was excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's trademark it. <laughs> anyway, well, Megan, thank you so much for being here and for just being you and spreading that joy. I know it adds so much joy in my day when I see your posts coming through on Instagram, and I'm sure it is for lots and lots of other people as well. So thank you for doing all that you do. Well, thank you for having me. I just think you're a bright light in this world, and people need exactly what you have. And so thanks for welcoming me and introducing me to all your followers. To learn more about Megan, for more information about her course, to see all of her lovely work, head on over to allshewrotenotes.com or you can always find all of the links, including where you can find her online on social media over in the show notes available at annettestepanian.com forward slash podcast forward slash 80. Okay. That said, you guys, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope it is filled with confetti and beautiful handwritten notes. And I'll see you back here next time for the Office Talk podcast. Talk to you soon. 